The Northrop XP-56 Black Bullet aircraft was developed by the American company Northrop Corporation in the 1940s. This unique plane attracted attention with its distinctive design, intended to reduce frontal resistance, as well as the use of bold innovative technologies. In the run-up to the war, the Army began to receive funding for the development of modern weapons. Part of the funds was allocated for the development of new fighters. The Air Force leadership wanted such an aircraft to surpass all existing fighters in speed, rate of climb, and armament. The competition for design projects began on August 7, 1939, and on September 13, it was announced that the Competition Commission had selected the projects of three firms, Curtis Wright, Republic, and Douglas. However, Douglas refused to continue working, and the Air Force commander, General Henry Arnold, turned to the Department of Defense for permission to use these funds to develop a promising fighter with high flight and technical characteristics. Thus, the R-40C document was created, which outlined the main requirements for such an aircraft. On May 15, 1940, the Technical Commission of the Air Force received 25 preliminary designs, and after five days of intense work, the commission determined the winners. They turned out to be Volte with the V-84 aircraft, in the future, XP-54, Curtis Wright with the CW-24B, XP-55, and Northrop with the N-2B, XP-56. Northrop engineers chose the tailless, aerodynamic scheme with coaxial propellers of opposite rotation for their aircraft, N-2B. The fighter had a short barrel-shaped fuselage with a protruding cockpit, a throat, and a sub-fuselage keel. A lightweight magnesium alloy was chosen as the main structural material for the aircraft. The structural details were to be joined together, for the first time in aviation, by welding. There were flaps with trimmers and opening elevators on the wing. The engine was located right behind the pilot's cockpit. The N2B project provided for the installation of a row liquid-cooled engine H1800 by Pratt & Whitney with a capacity of 1,800 horsepower. Full-scale model N2B was being built at full speed, and the rollout of the flight prototype was expected in September 1941. John Northrop was most concerned about the power plant. Pratt & Whitney switched to producing the 18-cylinder R2800 engine with a power of 2,000 horsepower. As a result of negotiations, Representatives of Pratt & Whitney convinced John Northrop to install the 2,000-horsepower R2800 engine on his fighter. The new power plant significantly worsened the initial calculated characteristics of the fighter. The flight weight of the N2B increased by almost 1,000 kg. Nevertheless, the military approved the installation of the R2800 engine on the fighter. The overall assessment was satisfactory and the aircraft was designated the XP-56 and named the Black Bullet. In April, test pilot John Myers began the first test runs on the surface of a dry lake bed. When taxiing at high speeds, the plane started swerving from side to side. The main culprits for this behavior were the brakes on the main wheels of the landing gear, which had to be replaced. At that time, Northrop learned about the accident at Pratt & Whitney. The power plant of the XP-56 underwent bench testing, and during one of the stages, the propeller blades were torn off by centrifugal forces. The designers decided to thoroughly inspect everything related to the power plant. During the inspections, looseness in the gearbox attachment was discovered, which appeared after the test runs and ground checks. The first two flights of the XP-56 took place only in September 1943. The aircraft flew at a height of 1.5 meters above the surface of Rogers Lake at a speed of about 270 kilometers per hour. The pilot had to constantly pull the control stick towards himself with great effort, while the aircraft constantly wanted to deviate from the selected direction. It turned out that the nose-down tendency during flight was caused by the forward center of gravity, and the directional instability was due to insufficient vertical surface area. During the third approach at a speed of about 200 km per hour, the aircraft suddenly flipped over, 
rotated twice, and crashed. The aircraft was completely destroyed, but pilot escaped with only a few bruises. The investigation into the cause of the accident revealed that the pneumatic system of the left landing gear strut had ruptured. The first flight of XP-56 No. 2 took place on March 22, 1944. It was piloted by the new test pilot, Harry Crosby. He struggled to lift the aircraft off the ground at a speed of 250 km per hour. After seven minutes of flight, the fuel gauge failed, and Crosby landed the aircraft. Nine days later, the fighter was ready for its second flight. The center of gravity was adjusted, and the fuel gauge malfunction was fixed. Crosby took off and reached an altitude of 1,500 meters. However, when retracting the landing gear, the aircraft suddenly pitched the nose upward, and the flight speed dropped to 190 kilometers per hour. The pilot immediately extended the landing gear, stabilized the aircraft's attitude using trimmers, and then retracted the landing gear again. Now Crosby was able to fully control the aircraft. However, when reaching a speed of 320 km per hour, he suddenly felt strong vibrations and noticed a tendency for the fighter to roll onto the left wing. Considering that further increasing the speed was dangerous, the pilot decided to bring the aircraft in for a landing. The company's specialists decided to test the aircraft in the NASA wind tunnel, but it was constantly occupied with more important research. While the XP-56 waited for its turn, Crosby made several more flights that added another item to the list of troubles. The Black Bullet had an inexplicably high fuel consumption. After the tenth flight, it was decided to halt further testing and development of the fighter. In the military's opinion, the XP-56 couldn't surpass contemporary fighters like the P-47 Thunderbolt. The aircraft was left at the Murak base, where it remained for two years. The question of continuing the tests was raised several times but without success. In 1946, the XP-56 was removed from the list of aircraft awaiting flight tests and was transferred to the Smithsonian Museum, where it remains to this day.